Hey everyone, uh, this is our pre-lab for our pineapple enzyme lab. Uh, this lab is going to be investigating enzymes as well as their activity and how certain factors affect that activity. Uh, now this lab has three major parts to it, okay? We have three tests. On the board here, we have written these three tests. We have a fruit juice portion of this lab, we have a temperature portion of this lab, and we have a pH portion of this lab. For each of these three tests, the starting point is always making gelatin. Gelatin is going to be something that an enzyme may or may not be acting on. So we are going to make gelatin prior to all three of these. And you're going to only make one set of gelatin for your entire lab table. No matter the fact that you guys are going to be running separate labs, you both are going to share this gelatin. To make the gelatin, you need two sets of water. You need 90 milliliters of water that is going to be hot. So you're going to use your larger graduated cylinder, and this is going to give us a lovely 50 milliliters. We'll pour that in, and then we'll go up to 40 to give us a total of 90. And this is going to need to go on your hot plate. You want to wait for this to boil. In the meantime, you can go through and measure out 30 milliliters of what's going to be cold water. So we'll again use our large graduated cylinder. We'll put our 30 milliliters in. And then we will wait for our water to boil. Magically, our water has started to boil. Can't you see the bubbles? At this time, you're going to take one packet of the gelatin, which is inside of this box, and you are going to pour the gelatin in, stir it up real nice and good, and we can take it off of the hot plate at this point in time. Be careful to touch the top part. It'll be a little bit cooler than down here. And then you are going to need to add your 30 milliliters of cold water. You want to stir this really nice and well until all of the gelatin is dissolved. That's kind of a key portion because we're basically making jello and we don't want it to get lumpy. All right, now Mr. Moreau is going to tell us our next phase. All right, once we've made our gelatin, we're ready for all three of our tests. The first being fruit juice. All right, our fruit juice tests uh, have six possible test tubes. We'll talk about how different lab tables are going to be tackling each one of these test tubes, but here's our process, okay? We have six different solutions that we want to test. These will be our fruit juice test subjects, one of which being fresh pineapple juice, and we're comparing the fresh pineapple against the others, okay? In order to prepare each test tube, we're going to add 10 milliliters of the gelatin that Mrs. Giggler just showed you how to make. That 10 milliliters will add, be added to the test tube, as well as 3 milliliters of whichever solution that we are uh, targeting for that specific test tube, okay? Here's how to make that specific test tube. Let's say that orange juice is our example for this particular test tube, okay? So I want to be making test tube four right now. That's my target, okay? I'm gonna prepare test tube number four in the fruit juice test. I will be adding 10 milliliters of the gelatin. So here's the gelatin that Mrs. Giggler has prepared, and here's my 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. I can add my gelatin and make sure I have 10 milliliters, which I do. That 10 milliliters will go into the test tube. And this is my gelatin. To that gelatin, I need to add three milliliters of whichever juice is labeled for this test tube. If this is test tube number four, I will be adding orange juice, which is what I have here. I need to make sure I add three milliliters of this. So I will measure out three milliliters. There is three. I will add that to my gelatin, and there is test tube number four completed. I do want to make sure this is mixed rather well. With the test tube, I just want to shake it like that a little bit to make sure the solutions mix fairly well. I'm all set with this test. I'm going to put this down, and uh, we're going to talk about how we label each one of these test tubes, and uh, Mrs. Giggle will talk about the second test here. In order to properly label all of these test tubes, we're going to be putting all of these tubes in the fridge overnight, which is going to get kind of complicated with Mr. Moreau's class, my classes, Mr. Sanchez, and Mr. Grava. So we want to make sure we keep all of our test tubes straight. When you label your test tubes, you're going to follow this nice, easy method. First, you're going to put your teacher's initial. My class would put a G. Mr. Moreau's class would put an M. 
Then you're going to put one of your lab partner's initials. Okay. Then you're going to put your test tube, uh, your test type. So fruits, the type of fruit would be test A. The temperature test would be test B. We'll talk about this test in just a second. And the pH test is test C. Then you're going to put your test tube number. So using this, we see that this test tube, labeled M-SM-C-2, is a student in Mr. Moreau's class named Stephen McGilligan, who did test type C, which was our pH test, and this test tube has inside of it NaOH. So when you go to make your test tubes, you're going to need to make sure every test tube has a wonderful piece of labeling tape on it using a Sharpie or a nice pen and label. We just did the uh, orange juice test tube. So this would be Mr. Moreau's class. He was RM dash. This is test type A. It is the fourth test tube and we know exactly what we've got. We would just put this nicely on our test tube so that we have everything figured out. All right, the second type of test that you could be running is going to be temperature. In this test, you are going to be adding three milliliters of fresh pineapple juice. Every test tube needs the three milliliters of the fresh pineapple juice first. Then you're going to take your test tube with the three milliliters of fresh pineapple juice and put it in a hot water bath. The goal of the hot water bath is to heat up or cool down this enzyme. Okay? Then once you have reached the specified temperature, you'll have a thermometer in there trying to get to either 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, or 100 degrees Celsius you will take the test tube out and allow it to cool. Once your test tube has cooled, you will add 10 milliliters of your gelatin, make sure that your test tube is well labeled, and then you will put it in the fridge overnight. Okay, so if we were to be making this test tube, we have a new fresh set of test tubes, clearly. Okay, and again, we're gonna add our three milliliters of pineapple juice. So let's pretend that this is pineapple juice. I'm going to take my 10 milliliter graduated cylinder and make sure you're always rinsing this out really well in between all of your measurements. I'm going to add three milliliters. Oops, that's a lot more than three. So we're going to try that again. Three milliliters of fresh pineapple juice. I'm going to add that to my test tube. Then I'm going to take this test tube and I'm going to put it in a hot water bath with my thermometer. And then I'm going to wait. And I'm going to watch and monitor what temperature this is actually at. When it's reached the desired temperature, depending on which test tube it is, I will take this test tube out and I will put it here. Then I will let it cool down. We want to make sure it's nice and cool and cool to the touch before you actually are going to be adding any of the gelatin. Then, just like before, you will take your already prepared gelatin and you are going to add 10 milliliters of that gelatin to the test tube. 10 milliliters, whoosh. Add that in. You'll want to make sure that you mix it really well, just like Mr. Moreau showed us. Put it down, and then we'll set it in the fridge overnight to see if it solidifies. All right, we've got one more test, so let's see what Mr. Moreau says about that one. All right, the final test that some of us will be running is how pH affects enzyme activity. This is test C. This is our third and final test of our lab, okay? We have three possible different test tubes because we have three possible solutions to test. One is an acid, one is a base, and one is just pure water, okay? Uh, let's make our hydrochloric acid um, test tube as an example. To do that, we will put three milliliters of pineapple into that test tube, three milliliters of the other solution, that being either the acid, the base, or the water, depending on which test tube we are going to be using, uh, and then also 10, milliliter, little, bleh, 10 milliliters of the gelatin. All right, let's make test tube one as an example. 
All right, over here I have my prepared acid solution. I'm also going to uh, have my gelatin ready, which Mrs. Gagler has made earlier today, okay? I need to start with putting three milliliters of pineapple juice into this. So here is my, uh, my pineapple juice. Let's pretend this is pineapple juice. And I will be adding three milliliters of the pineapple juice. There is my three milliliters. I will put my three milliliters of pineapple juice into the test tube. All right, so step one is done. I also need to add three milliliters of the other solution. In this case, that is my acid. Here is the acid. I will be placing the acid into the graduated cylinder to measure three milliliters. So to the pineapple juice, I will be adding three milliliters of the acid. So I have six milliliters total in there. All right. Now that I have the pineapple juice and my acid, and uh, I'm now ready to add my 10 milliliters of gelatin. So now that I'm ready to do that, I will use my graduated cylinder again. 10 milliliters of the acid is measured, added to the acid and the pineapple juice. And now this test tube contains three milliliters of the pineapple juice, three milliliters of acid, because this is test tube number one, and 10 milliliters of the gelatin. I'm ready to shake this up a little bit, make sure it's all mixed together well. And if I'm going to label this test tube, I want to make sure that I'm following our naming scheme. Thank you. All right, if I'm going to be labeling this test tube, this is the one I just made, all right? I'm in test C, I just made test tube number one. So my teacher is Mr. Moreau, so I will put the M on there. Uh, my name is Sean Michaels, so Sean Michaels will be my initials. The test that I ran is the next letter. This is test C for pH. And I just made test tube number one. So that will be my labeling scheme. And this will go directly on the test tube that I just made. There it is. That is a well-labeled test tube. No way I'm going to lose track of that. This goes into my rack. And I'm ready to store that overnight. Okay. Now those are all three tests that we can possibly run. All right. However, not every single partnership is going to be conducting every uh, every single test tube here. All right. Instead, we will be splitting up partnerships uh, based on which test we want each group to run. For example, this uh, this lab table is a set of two partnerships. One partnership will be doing test tubes one through th one through three of the fruit juice test. So these two people that sit at this lab table right here, they are responsible for these three test tubes. Once they make those three, they'll put them in, this test, in their test tube rack as they're labeled, and they are done for the day. Another group, for example, might be responsible for four through six of the temperature test. So they would be responsible for making these three test tubes in this test, labeling them correctly, and once they finish these three, they are also done. Okay? We had a lot of, lot of test tubes uh, set out during our lab, so once we're all set with those, we are ready for our overnight uh, storage and we'll be observing them the next day.